Okay, so announcements. Many of you, this is not your first semester at UNF, so, but if it is, what's your first semester in a while? The ISQ reminders, or a satisfaction survey, that basically gives you the ability to rank certain things on a scale from one to 10, followed by two, like, open, I don't wanna call them open response, pre-response things. So those are a great place for feedback for things like, hey, I wish that you would. There was a student who wrote about how YouTube example problems would be valuable to her. Um, that led me to actually make YouTube example problems because it hadn't occurred to me that like stopping and recording and going back would be advantageous. If you have that kind of feedback, that's a great place. Saying, I think you should never teach again, not super helpful. Um, I will read them, I will read all of them. I will make changes in my course based on those to some extent. Um, my boss will read those, their boss will read them. A lot of people read them, so just keep that in mind. Um, it is a place to tell the truth. If, I mean, I come to class all the time, but if I had like never come to class, now would be the time to like write that. Uh, but this QR code, and I will post a link to, a, to this survey in an announcement that will come tomorrow. Um, that is a survey that I wrote that has things like, which of these, I don't want to call them helpful things, but like, did you use the end of chapter worksheets? Did you use the YouTube videos? So one of the things I realized is the pandemic is changing how students learn, and I'm not sure that I am providing enough resources that are suitable. If you have seen something somewhere else, or if all semester, you're, every time you're like, I really wish that you would do this. Asking for the exam and then the exam again, probably not gonna happen, it's a fair ask. But that contains info that I care about. The ISQs is literally just like, it's the same for all your faculty. That is, I wanna say optional, like, it's just for me, I'm the only one that will read it. If something super cool comes out of it, I will share it with my coworkers or friends but it's optional. Um, I will post that in the announcement that comes tomorrow. It was planning to come this evening. However, um, my previous course asked that I would post the worksheet to the problems I'm gonna work in the review session in advance, so you can actually have a chance to do it, not just watch me do it. So on Sunday at 4.30 to 6-ish, I will stay as long as there are questions until I get hungry. To be fair, it's dinner time, so if I get hungry, I'm out. Um, if no one shows up and it's just me by myself, it will go much quicker, because I don't have any questions. I will still work through the whole worksheet. Um, it is on YouTube Live. There are two ways that you can get to that. One, you can follow my channel. Feels like I have a little box that says subscribe here. I don't. You can follow the channel. It will send you an email. Like, where's my YouTube channel? Professor Malcolm is going live now. Click the link, show up there. Alternatively, at 4.31, you can go to the website or my channel on the YouTube app, and it will say, she is live now, join this stream. Either of those work. You do not have to have an account to watch it. As far as I know, if you want to leave a comment, I think it will make you make an account, but I don't comment on YouTube lives that I watch. I just watch them creepily in the dark. Um, so that's up to there. The worksheet will still available, be available, and I will post the, oh my God, I will post the link in an announcement so that you don't have to go like scanning through everything in my YouTube channel to find it because lives don't go to the upload page, they go somewhere else. There's basically two tabs at the top. One is for uploads and one is for like recording, live recording, it goes there. I will post it. Next week, our final is on Wednesday, so one week from today. It'll be over one week from today in 14 minutes. Not that anyone's counting, but we are. I will host some office hours next week. They will be in some of these announcements for you guys. I will also be taking appointments if whatever I choose may or may not work for you, so feel free to ask for an appointment if necessary. Any questions about any of this info? Do we have class on Monday? No, there is no class on Monday. I assume that there is a final. 
the engineering guy who's usually in here writing about things that we don't know about, his final will be here Monday, so you can show up, but it will not be my final, and I wouldn't advise it. Yep, it will just be on, I don't want to say just be on YouTube, but it will automatically upload, provided I do all of the things exactly the right way, which I've successfully done all semester, so I don't think I'm going to screw it up now. Um, it will be, I'm going to do it for my house so the Wi-Fi is not as phenomenal as other places. It will work well enough, um, basically, because I will disconnect everything else from our Wi-Fi router so that I have Wi-Fi. Um, but it will just be a written recording. It will be pretty good. It will not have any of the visual problems that we have here due to the lights. So it should solve many of those issues. Any, yeah, other questions? So, some other info you might want. Hey, hold on. Oh, okay, so you can't count. Whatever. About the final. It's 200 points. It is cumulative. It's the same format as all the other ones. Nothing is changing. It's not suddenly multiple choice or any of the other excitements. Here are, if you are looking at the, what do I know will be on the final? Limiting reactants, titrations, naming of compounds, best word, drawing, naming, loose out structures, the ideal gas law, the stuff from chapter 10, calculating delta H reaction. We've done that many different ways. And many, this is not, the exam is six questions all worth whatever 200 divided by six is. This is just what I would consider we all know on my exams, there's at least some problems that are worth like a lot of points. These are the many of the lot of point topics. Feel free to continue to study other things, but this at least gives you somewhere to start. Any questions about the final, about, I don't know, any of the other things you might be needing in this moment? The final is at three. It's from three to 450. If you have somewhere where you're gonna have to take off of work, we can make other arrangements. I feel like I've said it all semester. You probably already know that. But I am more than happy if, I don't, I don't know where you would be that you didn't know you were gonna have to be there. But Every now and again, students like, oh, I had to take a day off of work to take your final. Like, that feels a little excessive. So, maybe you want to, I don't know. I want to take days off. Any questions about any of the previous Chapter 10 material? Any Alex questions? Any, I don't know, proof of concept thing? So today we have essentially three topics that we are going to talk about. We are going to talk about the density of air. We are going to talk about using balanced chemical equations. And hold on. Sorry, online people. There we go. So you can actually now see more of the board. Still glary, but better than before. Um, we're going to talk about density using balanced chemical equations, and then we are going to talk about partial pressures. So one of the things that we talked about in the beginning was that gases mix together. Some gases have different densities. Density changes where something, whether it floats or sinks. With gases, we know this to be true. Helium, a helium balloon floats. If you blow up a balloon with I don't know, lung air, regular air, CO2, it tends to not float. So we know that they don't have the same densities, so we're going to get them to populate in the environment slightly differently. As a reminder, density is usually, no, density is always mass over volume, 
Many of the units that we have talked about for either solids or for liquids are in, so let's say solids slash liquid units are grams per mil or grams per cubic centimeters. Don't forget, one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. And so density is the ability to determine how heavy or light something is. We know that this is true and we see it all the time in life. But one of the things that we can start to think about is how can we determine the density of a gas? So this is the mass, but gases don't really have masses. And so we could get a volume, but we need a way to get the mass. So what we can think about is that PV equals NRT. And so we want a way to determine density, just C. So we need the mass, hopefully in grams, over the volume. And so we can remember that moles multiplied by the molecular weight would give you mass. So N multiplied by the molecular weight equals mass. So we could determine that N times the molecular weight over the volume, where this is, so N is moles, N, the scriptium that we're trying to draw here, is the molar mass. And this gives you the density. So this gives you the right unit, but it feels kind of weird, and so maybe we can make that similar to PV equals NRT. So, Pressure times the molar mass divided by RT gives you density. Now, all I've done is rearrange some equations. So if density is similar to N times the molar mass over V, we know that N over V for this equation, so N over V equals P over RT, and so we just sub this into here to get this. We took a long way to get there. I could have just given you the equation. On your equation sheet, D equals pressure times script M over RT will be provided. The big, it's not a trick. What you need to remember is that M is the molar mass, not a different M. It should look scripty on the equation sheet because the other M that we're familiar with is capital M print, which is molarity, which is moles per liter. Any questions at this point for this equation? I will call it genesis, but the arrival of this equation. So how might we go about using this information? So we can calculate the density of carbon tetrachloride vapor at 714 torr and 125 degrees Celsius. So in this case, we are provided a pressure of 714 torr and a temperature of 125 degrees Celsius. So we know that density equals the pressure times the molar mass, R divided by T. T definitely needs to go into Kelvin, so we're going to add 273.15. That gives you 398.15 Kelvin. So the pressure. I have chosen one R value to memorize. All of them will be in a row, so you can pick the one with Tor. I just don't happen to know it off the top of my head. So I'm going to convert Tor to atmospheres, where there are 760 Tor and one atmosphere. And that gives you 0 0.939 atmospheres. So the only other value that we need is N, which is the molecular weight. So M4CCl4, in case 
I'm trying to remind you of all the things that we've seen already this semester. The molecular weight is the sum of the atomic weights, or the numbers in the periodic table. So it's 12.01 plus 4 times 35. I always think I'm going to know that, and I don't. I was right, 35.45. And this gives you 153.80 grams per mole. So now we have this information. So now we can just plug all this into our calculator where the density is equal to the pressure of 0.939 atmospheres multiplied by the molar mass of 153.80 grams per mole divided by R, 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres mole Kelvin, multiplied by the temperature of 398.15 Kelvin, and that gives me 400, nope, 4.42 grams per liter. On the exam, I would tell you the units for the density, because usually we ask for density in grams per mil. However, in this case, we are looking for grams per liter which is just this, it's very similar. Question? Uh, you put like vapor to like hit, like hit the gas, right? Yes. It would be, pr I would like to believe that it would be pretty apparent whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas density that we're looking for, but in this case, it is the density of a vapor, which is a gas. Any other questions? So perhaps a more chemistry-induced way that we can use PV equals in our T is to remind ourselves about balanced chemical equations. We will see these again on the final. But the other way that we can see this is in an example problem like this. So automobile airbags are inflated by nitrogen gas generated by the rapid decomposition of sodium azide using the following balanced equation, which is 2 NaN3 decomposes to 2 sodiums plus 3 nitrogen gas, 3 moles of nitrogen gas. So if an airbag has a volume of 36 liters, and is to be filled with nitrogen gas at 1.15 atmospheres in 26 degrees Celsius, how many grams of NaN3 must be decomposed? So this calculation is a two-parter because we need to use PV equals NRT to determine the moles of nitrogen gas that are generated. Then we're going to use the balanced equation and the molecular weight to determine the grams of sodium azide. So let's start with the first part. First things first, write down what you know and what you're hoping to know. So we know that the pressure is 1.15 atmospheres. We know that the volume is 36 liters. We know that the temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. So that converts to 299.15 Kelvin. We want the mass of Na and 3. So we can use PV equals NRT. But that is going to tell us about the moles of nitrogen gas in the balloon. It doesn't actually tell us the moles of sodium azide. So N of N2 is going to be equal to PV over RT, which is 1.15 atmospheres 
multiply by 36 liters, 0 0.08206 to 06 liters, atmospheres, moles, Kelvin, 299.15 Kelvins. So now we get 1.69 moles of N2. So now we know the moles of nitrogen gas. Many moons ago in chapter three, we could convert moles of a product or a reactant to the other using the stoichiometric ratio. The stoichiometric ratio, for those of us who are like, were we there? Was I here? Are the big numbers in the front of the balanced chemical equation. Chapter three stuff, you know, September. So now I'm gonna take my 1.69 moles of N2 and use the balanced chemical equation that says for every three moles of N2, there are two moles of NaN3. And it asks for grams, so I'm then going to use the molecular weight that says one mole of sodium azide weighs 65.01 grams. And that gives me 73 grams of sodium azide with significant figures. As we look at this calculation, we have the PV equals NRT part, which is what we've been working on. The second part where we go back to the molar mass and the molecular weight, do we have questions about either part of that? Do we have any questions in general? No. I'm not going to erase this. But for this next question that says, when octane is combusted in a combustion engine, the products are carbon dioxide and water. The gas tank for a Dodge Neon contains 12.0 gallons of gas. This tank contains 0.821 kilograms of octane. If the car is driven on a cool day at 18.2 degrees Celsius with a pressure of 0.928 atmospheres, what is the volume of carbon dioxide that is produced? The volume of the gas tank is not what we're looking for. I'm gonna let you guys work on it. I'll give you a couple minutes. It is not going to be set up exactly this way, but I'll leave this here as assistant.
because that tells you how much more you're doing. Can you convert the 821 grams of oxygen to how much? Is the air fluid. I would like to know. Yes, maybe. I don't know. How many more? How many more? How many of you would like another minute or so, or have we all reached? Do you have a couple?
Ask me what you get. How many TikToks do you have? When we read this question, part of what happens is we all kind of start to panic. So my suggestion would be that we write down what we know first. So the pressure is 0 0.928 atmospheres. The temperature is 18.2 degrees Celsius which converts to 291.35 Kelvin. And so the other things in PV equals NRT are V and N. We're asked for the volume of CO2, but we are provided an N-ish value of point, I'll start this over here, 0 0.821 kilograms of octane. And octane in this case CH18, H, CH18. So it's asking for the volume of CO2. The question tells you about the volume of the gas tank, which is unnecessary information because it's asking about the product when 0.8821 kilograms of octane are completely converted to CO2. So from here, we're going to take our kilograms. In one kilogram, there are 1,000 grams of CH, CH, H18. So now you have 821 grams. We need to take that 821 grams all the way to moles of CO2. So the 821 grams of CH818 can be converted to moles using the molar mass. Dimensional analysis means the top stuff has to go on the bottom so they can start to cancel out. The molar mass here is 114.26 grams in one mole of C8H18. And this molar mass is 8 times 12.01 plus 18 times 1.01. These numbers came from your periodic table in the square. So now we have moles of, of octane. It asks for moles, or we need to think about CO2. So in this case, we're using the balanced chemical equation first, where in the previous example, we use it second. So now we're going to use the stoichiometric ratio of 16 moles of CO2 for every 2 mole of C8H18. And that gives you... 57.483 moles of CO2. As we remember this part of chapter 3, or if we don't, what questions do we have about this calculation before we return to PV equals NRT? So it asks for the volume, which is NRT over B. No, it's not. NRT over P. So in this case, we can then just start to plug in our values of 57.483 moles times the 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres mole Kelvin multiplied by the temperature, which is 291. 
0.35 Kelvin divided by the vault, the pressure of 0 0.928 atmospheres. When you plug this into your calculator, you should get 1,480.9 liters. The problem has three sig figs everywhere, which means that this needs to be rounded to 1,480 liters. Or Alex would require you to type in 1.48 times 10 to the third. I will accept both values interchangeably. Any, what questions do we have? So for the next, I don't know, 35 minutes, four minutes, what we have left for the day, or when we finish early, we're gonna talk about gas mixtures and partial pressures. So a gas mixture is often what you take if, take if you get a tank of air. If you go scuba diving, more often than not, you get some mixture of air that has oxygen, nitrogen, I don't actually scuba dive because due to the idea of being underwater it terrifies me, but being that far underwater, but I do know that that tank contains more than just oxygen and a whole bunch of other things. So the question we want to think about in this section, it's what exactly or how can we use the fact that there are multiple gases in a single tank? So if we were to think about mass, the total mass is equal to the sum of the masses. We want to know how much something weighs, and there are four things in there. We could weigh each one and add them up. This is also true for pressures. So the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of any given gas in any given system. So we can just add up PV equals NRT, or P equals all of these separate pressures. If you have already completed your Alex using the mole fraction, we're going to do it a very long way, and then we will look at the short, quick way. If you're like, what's a mole fraction? Hang out. We'll all find out together in five minutes. So in this case, or in this example, a mixture of six grams of oxygen and nine grams of methane is placed in a 15-liter vessel at zero degrees Celsius. What is the partial pressure of each gas and what is the total pressure in the vessel? So in this case, we want to use the idea that P total is equal to P of O2 plus P of CH4. So to calculate the pressure of O2, that's going to be N of O2 RT over V. So in order to determine the end of O2, we need to determine the moles of O2. The moles of O2, so N of O2 is the 6 grams of O2 divided by, bless you, maybe, 32.00 grams in one mole, and that gives you 0 0.188 moles of O2. So from this information, we can now plug that in to the pressure of O2 equation. This is a PV equals an RT. We can call it the classic version. It's just the usual way that we've calculated that. So P of O2 is 0 0.188 moles of O2 multiply by 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres moles Kelvin, multiply by the temperature, which in this case is 273.15, divided by the total volume, which is 15 liters. This is going to give us the pressure of oxygen to be 0 0.281 atmospheres. What questions do we have this far?
So fortunately or unfortunately, we are now going to repeat the whole process for methane. Starting with the calculation of N of CH4. So N of CH4 is 9 grams multiplied by 16.05 grams in one mole. And that gives you 0 0.563 moles of CH4. We can now plug this into a pressure equation where P of CH4 is equal to 0.563 moles times 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres mole Kelvin multiplied by 273.15 Kelvin divided by 15 liters and that gives me 0 0.841 atmospheres. So now it's asked for P total. So we need to combine our two pressures where P total equals P of O2 plus P of CH4. So 0 0.281 plus 0 0.841. That gives me 1.122 atmospheres. Well, things the sig figs on the p total are actually four, even though each of the previous values only had three. When you add them to up, because you add, it goes with the decimal places, not the number of sig figs. So that's a significant figure reminder. So as we start to think about this, one of the things that feels exceptionally repetitive is the reality that R, T, and V are the same for each of these. So it kind of feels like we're doing repetitive math. And we are to some extent. So one of the things we can start to think about is how might we be able to manipulate or utilize this information. So if each of the gases behave independently, the partial pressure, in this case, 0.281, atmospheres corresponds to oxygen, the remaining 0.841 atmospheres are for methane. They are fully separate and they do not really interact with one another. So we can start to think about the partial pressure, which is basically the pressure of one over the whole. And so when we think about this in reference to the whole system, if we look at these equations, so P total equals N of O2 RT over V plus N of CH4 RT over V. So you could have also written this as N of O2 plus N of CH4 times RT over V to where P total is equal to the sum of the moles times RT over V. So how can we start to think about the partial pressure in reference to this? So we're going to start to think about the mole fraction, which has the symbol chi, which is a scripty X. So if we wanted to determine just the pressure for one versus the other. So So if we have P total is equal to P1 plus P2, we can start to isolate P1. So the pressure of any one system is equal to the N of that system divided by N total 
multiplied by p total. Now the way we get this is we check p total, which is equal to n total rt over b, which is equal to p1 plus p2. What we're trying to look at here is, is there a way that if we are provided the total mold or the total pressure, we can determine the partial pressures of this? So we can. So P1, which is the partial pressure, is equal to this value here, is what's called the mole fraction. And the symbol for that is chi, which is a script the X or the Greek letter X, So you could have written this equation as P1 equals chi1 times P total, which says that the partial moles, the moles of one divided by the total moles times the total pressure gives you the pressure of one. All of this is to say that if you're provided more information than you were, so in the previous example, you're not provided enough information that the partial pressure equation is valid. You would have to calculate the total moles in the mole fraction. It would be the same amount of math, just different math. But if we look at an example here, where the mole fraction of nitrogen in air is 0.78, and the barometric pressure is 760 torr, what is the partial pressure of nitrogen? So the pressure of nitrogen is equal to the chi of nitrogen multiplied by P total. So the partial pressure of nitrogen is 0.78 no, the mole fraction, the total pressure is 764. So when you plug that into your calculator, you should get 590 torr. Is the partial pressure, which means that the remaining 170 torr correspond to other components of the system. So what questions do we have about partial pressures or mole fractions at this time? So in this example, a study of the effects of certain gases on plant growth requires a synthetic atmosphere composed of 1.5 mole percent CO2, 18 mole percent oxygen, and 80.5 mole percent argon. Calculate the partial pressure of oxygen in the mixture if the total pressure in the atmosphere is 745 torr. Part A. In part B, it asks, if this atmosphere is to be held in 121 liter space at 295 Kelvin, Kelvin, how many moles of O2 are needed? I'm gonna give you a moment to just see what you can do.
questions about oxygen and see if we are using one of the other numbers. You can also do that too, but I would provide it.
Yeah. Ah. Or now that you have n protons, you can use the multiplication. Yeah. I lost my paper, but I'm pretty sure that's not the right answer that I have. It is not the answer that I have. There's a couple of things that make it different. So I gave you the mole percent, which in, back in chapter two, do you remember when we would give you the isotope abundance and we needed to convert it to the fractional abundance? This is the same thing. So a mole percent is the mole fraction multiplied by 100. So for oxygen, the mole percent is 18, which makes the mole fraction. So for P of O2, we are looking for chi of O2 times P total. So chi of O2 is just 0 0.18, and P total is 745 torr. So in part A, we need to multiply 0 0.18 by 745 tor, and that gives you 134 tor. I will specify if I want it in a special unit. If it doesn't, you can leave it in any, I don't want to say any unit, but whatever works for you unit, or what unit you get it. Any questions about part A? So from part A, we can go into part B, and it says all these things to ask how many moles of oxygen are needed. So for part B, we're going to use PV equals NRT, but we want to use this in terms of oxygen, and we're asked for N of O2, and that is PV over RT. Now the question is, what pressure do we use? P total or PO2? We need to use the pressure of oxygen so that because we can use the partial pressure of oxygen and that corresponds to the moles of oxygen. Because I only know one R value, I'm going to convert to atmospheres. 760 torr and one atmosphere gives me 0 0.176 atmospheres, so the pressure is 0 0.176 atmospheres. The tank is 121 liters divided by 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres moles Kelvin, and the temperature in this case is 295. So then when you plug it into your calculator, you should get 0 0.880 moles of O2. Do, what questions do we have? Did anyone, did anyone like to share if they got a different answer? The mole percent is the percent of the total container in moles. So if it was, however, it's basically the mole fraction as a percent. Are you asking something like a practical question? Like what is mole percent or what? what yeah, practically, what is it? So practically, People don't like to see things in fractions because practically people can't do math. So practically, people report them. So if you get a tank, it's in mole percents. So when I order air tanks, because we use them to float things in my office, not in my office, in my lab I have a floating table, and you can get it with varying percentages of different gases. And they're reported as percentages by moles as opposed to by weight or by something else. Robin, did you have a question? I, I think the grammatic is slightly incorrect. Uh, 
I have it on constant for a while. Uh, did you so use the... Mm. Oh, gotcha. Fair so question. Other questions? Our next example. This one is a little bit closer to Alex. The thing that you need to know, because it is not obviously missing in this, is that the temperature is 294.15 Kelvin. in order to complete this calculation. I will give you about four and a half minutes and then I will start. This is the last question of the deck, of the semester, of the day, of, of our lives in this course. What? In order to make it slightly more expedient for all of you, the molecular weight of N2O is 44.02 grams. The molecular weight of SF6 is 146.07 grams.
in the interest of making sure we finish on time, I'm going to start talking and starting to work through this. So in this case, because we have a gas tank that's filled with N2O and SF6, in order to use the mole fraction and the partial pressure, it becomes kind of a question of which way do we tackle this? You can't. There are, I don't want to say a plethora of options, but many options. You can calculate the moles of each and then calculate the partial pressure and add them up. You can calculate the moles, add that up to give you P total, determine P total, no. add the moles up, that gives you N total, you can use that to calculate the total pressure, and then you can use the mole fraction. As long as you get to the, I don't want to say the final answers, there are many routes, none of them are any more or less easy, in my opinion. It's all a variety of which one of these do you want to do. So I'm going to choose to first calculate the moles and then use the total moles to find P total. So 8.18 grams of N2O divided by 44.02 grams in one mole gives you 0 0.1858 moles of N2O. For SF6, I'm going to take my 12.1 grams divide by 146.07 grams in one mole. And that gives you 0 0.082884 moles of SF6. I'm going to choose that I would prefer to calculate the total pressure and then use the mole fractions to calculate the partial pressures. You may choose a different choice. You should get the same answer. So N total is where we add up N of N2O and N of SF6, and that gives you 0 0.26864 moles. So P total equals NRT over V. 0.26864 multiplied by 0 0.08206 times 294.15 Kelvin divided by 7.12 liters, which gives you 0 0.911 atmospheres. And that is P total. So we have in total in the two moles, so we can determine the mole fraction, so chi of N2O is 0.81858 divided by the total of 0.26864, and that gives me 0 0.6916, the mole fraction here. For SF6, the mole fraction is 0 0.08284 divided by N total of 0.26864, which is 0 0.3084. So now we have the mole fractions and the total pressure. This will allow me to determine the partial pressure of each by using the total pressure and the Partial pressure, so P of N2O is 0.6916 times 0.911 atmospheres, and that gives me 0 0.630 atmospheres. P of SF6 is 0.3084 times 0.911 atmospheres, and that gives you 0 0.281 atmospheres. What, do we have any questions on this calculation? Yeah. Oh, I wrote it on 
the board because I realized it wasn't, and it's okay. I said it and you were probably already thinking about something else. I, I don't want to say made it up because I looked at the problem like, we need a temperature. It has been my pleasure this semester. I look forward to seeing you again around campus. I will also see you next week. If you did not get your mini exam six, I have those. Otherwise, I will see you all next week.